everyone welcome to this e lecture myself professor neha sharma from department of computer engineering kk wag institute of engineering education and research nashik we are nac a accredited and nb accredited for eight branches in this particular e lecture we are discussing one of the courses from b computer engineering 2015 course of savitri bai phule pune university the name of the course is data analytics of semester 1 the topic that we are going to cover in this particular e lecture belongs to unit number 3 and what we are going to study here is association rule mining so before we begin to study the concepts let us have a look uh, at the objectives and the outcome so the objective of this particular e lecture is to understand the concept of association rule mining for market basket analysis at the end of this lecture you will be able to define what is market basket analysis evaluate the candidate rules using the concepts of support confidence lift and leverage you will also be able to identify the applications of association rule mining so let us start let us say we have a scenario that uh, we visit any retail store or a uh, shopping mall just like walmart target or big bazaar so if we are the customer and we visit such a retail store or a mall often we tend to take the items that we wish to purchase and we place it in our shopping basket now if we are the owner of such an organization or if we are the owner of the mall or of the retail store what is our main aim or what is our goal so the goal of any organization is somehow to increase the revenue now how do we do it the answer to this is to mine the data that is available to us in such a way that we are able to identify which items are frequently bought together how does it help let us see one of the scenario suppose uh we are able to identify that customers who tend to purchase bread also purchase jam or customers who tend to purchase laptop also purchase a laptop bag now how does such type of relationship help us for this we need to understand one of the key concept that is called as market basket analysis so this term consists of three key terms one is market another is basket and another is analysis now what does this mean is from the analysis of the shopping basket which consists of number of items that different customers wish to buy we apply certain key techniques on uh, the record of all the customers or on the market basket of all the customers that is available to us in such a way that we are able to uncover the associations or relationship between certain items this relationship is just like bread and jam laptop and bag now how does identifying such relationship help let us say we are able to identify that customers that purchase bread and butter also tend to purchase eggs so as a retail as the owner of the retail shop what i would do is i would place a special offer on eggs so that almost all the customers who purchase bread and butter will also purchase eggs because i have placed a special offer on the eggs so if this happens definitely i'll be able to attract more and more customers and my revenue increases now the question arises is how do we uncover such relationships or associations the answer to this question is using the concept of association rule mining 
Now what are these association rules? This association rule is one of the method of supervised of unsupervised learning. Now as we know that unsupervised learning method is the method which considers an unlabeled data set and tries to identify the patterns from the unlabeled data set. That is why it is called as unsupervised. Now this association rule mining is descriptive method not a predictive method. Now what does it mean is uh, we use the data that is available and try to identify the hidden relationships in that data. Now how do we represent these relationships? Such relationships are often represented in the form of rules. We will see that in the next slide. Now what type of questions this association rule mining answers? First, if we use the concept of association rule mining, we are able to identify which products customers purchase together because we are able to identify the relationships between products. Second type of question that it answers is what products do similar customers tend to buy? Now answering this question help us identify the common behavior between the customers. Okay, So this is uh, the type of questions that association rule mining answers. Now how to go about it? Suppose we are able to identify that customers who purchase cereal also buy milk. In bracket what you see is there are 90% of the chances that customer who purchases cereal also purchases milk. Okay. Similarly, you can see customer who purchases bread also purchases milk and there are 40% chances of this. So, such type of rules we are able to identify using association rule mining. So, how do we represent this association rules? So, any rule or any association rule is of the form x gives y or x tends to y which means when x is observed y is also observed. Now what is this x and what is this y? x is the if part and y is the then part. So it is represented in the form of if then rule. So if x then y then y. So if the per customer purchases x he or she also purchases y. Now this x component is called as the antecedent and y component is called as the consequent. We also need to understand certain key terms like item set. So item set is nothing but collection of items or entities that customer wishes to purchase or has it in the, mas in the basket. Similarly, there is another term called as k item set. So, K indicates the number of items in the item set. So, when I say one item set, you have a single item. When I say two item set, there is a pair of items. And similarly, if I say K item set, there are K items in the item set. Certain examples we will see of this item set. One of the example is items purchased in one transaction by a single customer. Similarly, item set can be a set of hyperlinks clicked by a particular user in a single session. Now, there are different type of rules that we can identify. If we are able to identify association between only two entities or only two items, then we say we have single cardinality. Similarly, if we are able to identify relationships between multiple such items then we say that cardinality is greater than 1. Now imagine a scenario wherein say for example Big Bazaar I have the record of transactions of all the customers who have purchased from Big Bazaar over a year. So imagine what would be the size of my data set. Obviously, it is going to be huge. 
Now identifying rules from this data set is tedious of course and the number of rules such rules that I am able to identify will also be huge because the data set is huge. Okay. Now if I consider all such rules then definitely it will be very difficult for me to, uh, to decide which rules are to be considered for uh, keeping special offers. So there has to be some measure association so that we are able to identify which of these rules is more promising or is more trustworthy or is a rule which, which, which we can be more, much more confident about. So for this we use different type of association measures. What are such measures? There are different measures. In this particular lecture we are going to cover four such measures. First is the support, second is the confidence, third is the lift and fourth is the leverage. Let us see them one by one. Let us say we are given with an item set L. So support of any given item set is nothing but the percent of transaction that contain that particular item set. So let us say uh, the given item set is a one item set which consists of a single item that is bread and 80% of all the transactions that we have to consider consist of bread. Then what would be the support? Yes, support is nothing but percent of transactions that contain L. So 80% of transaction contain bread. That is why support of this particular item set is 0.8. Similarly, if 60% of all transaction contain a given item set bread and butter, then the support of this particular item set would be 0.6. Now, there is one more term that we need to understand here, which is called as minimum support threshold. Now how this is useful? If we are to calculate support of all the item sets that we have, we have to determine which of these item sets are more promising. So for that purpose, we use the concept of minimum support threshold. So let us say I keep or I assume the minimum support threshold to be 70% or 0.7. So what we are interested in is, we are interested in the rules which have support greater than or equal to 0.7. So from the two previous examples that we have seen, obviously we are going to consider the first uh, item set that is bread because the support of the first item set is greater than our minimum support threshold. And we are going to discard the second item set because it has a lesser support. So that is how the concept of minimum support threshold is useful. Now we move on to the next measure to identify the, to evaluate the candidate rules, which is confidence. So how do we calculate confidence and what is this confidence? Confidence gives us the trustworthiness of a particular rule. So let us say I have a rule if x then y then confidence of this particular rule is nothing but support of both x and y upon support of x. In other words support of antecedent and consequent divided by support of antecedent. So higher the confidence the better the rule is or the more trustworthy the rule is. So let us see an example of this. Let us say we have a rule, if bread and eggs, then milk, okay, and we have to calculate the confidence of this particular rule. So as per our formula, confidence of the rule is nothing but support of x and y, that is in our case, support of bread, eggs and milk, which is nothing but 0.5, divided by support of x, which is nothing but again 0.5. So 0.5 upon 0.5 gives us confidence as 1, which clearly means that 100% of the time a customer who purchases bread and eggs definitely purchases milk. 
so this is what confidence is all about but one issue in this particular evaluation criteria is if you have a look at the formula it only considers the antecedent and not the consequent so which means that the rule does not give you a true implication of the association or a true implication of the relationship between x and y because this can be coincidental or it may occur due to some randomness so for this purpose we use two other evaluation criteria which are lift and leverage so lift measures much more often x and y occur together than expected if statistically independent that means in this case we consider both the antecedent and the consequent as a denominator so lift of the rule x gives y is nothing but support of x and y divided by support of x into support of y now what does this measure give us so if the lift comes out to be 1 it indicates that x and y are statistically independent that means there is less association between x and y whereas if the value of lift is greater than 1 it indicates the usefulness of the rule that means that is a rule that we should consider let us see this with the help of example let us say we have 1000 transactions and uh, we have we want to calculate the lift of the rule if milk then eggs so x is our milk and y is our eggs so if we have to calculate this we want support of x and y so support of an x and y as given is it appears in 300 transactions which means 300 out of 1000 that is nothing but 0.3 divided by support of x that is support of milk which in our case is 500 so 500 upon 1000 gives us 0.5 into support of y that is support of x which in our case is 400 so 400 divided by 1000 is 0.4 which gives us the value of lift as 1.5 so this indicates the value is greater than 1 that means definitely the rule can be considered further because the rule is stronger in the another example we are calculating the lift of if milk then bread and as you can see here the value of lift calculated is 2.0 so if you compare the two rules which of these two rules is has greater strength obviously the second one next we see the last measure of evaluating the candidate rules and that is leverage so leverage is nothing but it measures the difference in the probability of x and y appearing together compared to the statistical independence that is whatever value we were considering in the denominator for the formula of lift this we are subtracting it from the numerator as to calculate the leverage so leverage of the rule x gives y gives us support of x and y minus support of x into support of y now how do we identify whether this rule is useful or not so the value of leverage if it is zero it indicates x and y are statistically independent whereas the value of leverage if it is greater than zero definitely the rule is useful so again we consider the same example here we are calculating the leverage of if milk then x and as you can see here the value of leverage comes out to be 0.1 and in the second case for the second rule if milk then bread if we are calculating the leverage of this particular rule it comes out to be 0.2 so in this case also we can say that the second rule is better than the first one but obviously here both the rules are useful because in both the cases the value of leverage is greater than 0 okay so these were the different ways in which we can identify the uh, we can evaluate the candidate rules now we move on to the last topic of the applications of this market basket analysis 
so this term market basket analysis it refers to the implementation of the association rules so where we can use it obviously the first answer to this question is for better merchandising where uh, we are able to decide which products we should include or exclude from the inventory every month the second uh, reason or the second application would be in placement of the products within the related products that means if we uh, using the association rules if we are able to identify what are the products that customer may purchase together we place them physically or logically together or nearby so that is the first application another possible application is for recommender systems and click stream analysis recommender systems obviously we all are aware of amazon netflix so what they do is uh, depending on the behavior or depending on the likings of the customers uh, the recommender systems using us uh, use association rules and suggest or provide recommendations to the customer for uh, according to their liking behavior the second possible uh, application for association rules is click stream analysis and in this case it uh, click stream is nothing but it is the sequence of the clicks that user has in a particular session or on a particular website so the website visitor if they visit page x then from page x they go to link a b or c or d or e or f so use if this click stream is analyzed definitely we are able to uh, observe or we are able to identify the browsing behavior of the user and accordingly we can provide the recommendations so that was all about the applications of the market basket analysis and uh, we move on to the end of the session end of the lecture so in this lecture we have covered the concept of association rule mining market basket analysis we have seen how do we evaluate the candidate rules using the concept of support confidence lift and leverage and we have also seen the examples of each of this and at the end we have seen the applications of market basket analysis and we have also seen the applications of the association rule mining so i hope you all have understood the concept still if you have any doubts definitely you can feel free and mail me on ngsharma@kkvag.edu.in and thank you so much